everybody, this is Eugene Nick Dinsmore, and this is Eugene Behind the Scenes. Just sitting here at the uh, beachfront condo in Florida, hanging and banging, thugging and bugging, limping and pimping. Gotta go out, sun's out, gun's out, sun's out, bun's out. Oh my God. People have been asking me, Eugene, what are some of the crazy rules in WWE? I said, what kind of question is that? What do you mean what kind of crazy rules are in the WWE? I have no idea what people are talking about. We need rules. Nobody respects the, the rules inside the ring, the referee has, and the rules in the back. I don't know what they are anymore. Heck, I was there years ago. But there was one instance when you talk about rules. It was a night. Just like tonight. An incident went down that is ever going to be remembered as the legend of the reverse Tampa screw job. <laughs> All right, so I was a coach at the Performance Center. For NXT, this was about 2013, 2014-ish. Performance Center was in Orlando. They had left the FCW, Florida Championship Wrestling Building, which was in Tampa. But I believe that there was still a lease on the building, so they were using it for live events. So one time we drove to the... This was the last event in the FCW building, and I think the only one that I was an agent at. So I had a match with an undercard tag team. I've written this out, so I might just sort of read just a little bit of it. And you say to yourself, wait a minute. I've never heard of a reverse Tampa screw job. I've heard of the Montreal screw job. No, trust me, this is the reverse Tampa screw job. And it has to do with rules. And it has to do with programming your crowd on understanding the rules. Because the fact of the matter is, I want to pull the curtain back a little bit. Heels get heat by cheating, ideally behind the referee's back. In Western culture, it's good guy versus bad guy. And the bad guy cheats to get the advantage. If the bad guy doesn't cheat, what makes him bad? That's where we should insert like crickets or maybe the uh, Jeopardy thing. Regardless, this is the story of the reverse Tampa screw job. Applause. As a coach and producer, I found that WWE would implement not rules, but certain things that were looked down upon in tag team wrestling. I wrote this because uh, our good friend Jim Cornette often says, tag teams learn the rules. And when I say looked down upon, I meant looked down upon by Vince McMahon. Now, I know he's not loud in the WWE building anymore, but we can still sell his, say his name on here, right? It hasn't been totally like blasphemed out yet. All right, so if Vince looked down upon it, then nobody could do it. They would often say that... Uh, we had our WWE Universe audience, but we really, the employee, or not employees, but the uh, wrestlers had an audience of one, and that was Vince. Things looked down upon, varying from TV to TV, of course, would be things like two heels cheating inside the ring behind the referee's back at the same time, which professional wrestling, territorial professional wrestling, used to be based upon tag team wrestling because you could get so much more drama out of so many more people involved in the match. I never understood why the traditional tag team wrestling that has built wrestling from probably the late 1800s, traditionally, honestly, Vince didn't want to do. And two guys cheating behind the referee's back is the oldest, easiest way to get heat. I don't get it. The biggest of the four men involved in this match. Oh, there's a hard whip with Michaels going into the knee of Black. It was looked down upon in a tag match to have a double bump and feed comeback, which means both heels bump and feed one fresh incoming baby face. You see these in matches from years ago, and every now and then you'll see it on... Let me put a little asterisk in there. I don't know what they do now because I wasn't there. This was 2010, 2015, when you didn't see a lot of bump and feed come back by two guys. Bing, bing, bing. And when I was a coach, I said, we need to work on this. Oh, oh, Coach Nick, we don't need to work on this because Vince doesn't want us to do it. I said, okay, let me give you a scenario. Let's say we're in the Royal Rumble, and Cena hits the ring. Does everybody need to know how to bump and feed? Uh, yeah then we need to work on it. Because I assume you guys want to be in the match where Cena is, because that's where the money is. I don't know. Sometimes I think I'm just crazy and just don't understand this crazy business. Number three, it was looked down upon for the illegal participant on the ring apron to reach and strike their legal opponent inside the ring, but it was perfectly okay for the legal participant in the ring to strike the illegal opponent on the ring apron. Rule-wise, yes, the guy on the outside shouldn't hit the guy on the inside. Cheating-wise, yes, the guy on the outside should hit the guy on the inside, but it was looked down upon so nobody di did it. And if you see on these rules, you're systematically handcuffing the heels to not be able to get heat. Why? Don't we want to have a good match? Isn't that the template of the match? Maybe I'm wrong. Number four. But at the same time, another non-rule in a tag match 
Each team was allotted one save, and this become, becomes instrumental in this little story here. Each team is allotted one save, meaning the participant on the apron can come in and break up one pin attempt per match, but any more would be a disqualification. I remember hearing this rule when I was a kid. It was the, the UWF that really established it. And when I talk about established it, they did it in matches, and the commentators talked about it so you knew what was going on. We knew the rules, and we knew the bad guys were trying to break it. Confusing, right? I say these aren't rules, but the referees, when I was a coach, the referees in the ring, were instructed to stop the match and disqualify the team that perpetrated the infraction. So all the teams knew this, and they complied. But the TV product, meaning specifically the announcers, never told the audience these were disqualifiable offenses. We fucking cheat to get heat. You can't cheat unless... You know the goddamn rules. So, I'm the coach. I'm the agent. The last live event ever at the FCW building. And I was the coach of two guys that called themselves the All-Star Club. Now, these guys were not yet on NXT. We were formulating this character. Two athletic guys. One of them was a college wrestler. One of them was another phenomenal performer. Um, unfortunately, both of them got released and never made it to the uh, main roster. And it could be because of the... Say it with me, reverse Tampa screw job. I was the specific coach for this new hot heel tag team that was about to get the rocket strapped to their backs. These were my guys. They were called the All-Star Club. Travis, Tyler, and Troy McLean, two good-looking, young, cocky, legit athletes. They were wrestling a team of Mojo Raleigh and Angelo Dawkins, and Rudy Charles was our referee. This was the first live event run and it was supposed to be the first win for the All-Star Club. We pulled out every dramatic tag team advantage that we were allowed to do. So Mojo, who was over in NXT, over. I mean, like, over, over. Like, a road warrior pop over. It's Travis Tyler with his big move. Everyone thinks it over, but that sneaky little Troy McClain is in there to break up the pin, their one breakup attempt, and use the All-Star Club's one save. Now that it was time for the vicious heat on Mojo, who was selling like Ricky Morton. The combination of the All-Star Club's heat-getting techniques and Mojo's realistic selling had everyone in the old FCW arena on the edge of their seats waiting for the tag. The match carries on and the heels slip on the proverbial banana peel, leading to Mojo making the hot tag to Angelo Dawkins. The crowd went banana. Road wear like pop. Angelo's tagged in. Bing, bang, boom, bumping everybody around. Big Angelo Dawkins is unstoppable. The plan for Travis Tyler to go for a big save with a flying elbow on Angelo Dawkins, but quick like a cat, Angelo Dawkins is going to move out the way so Travis can hit Troy McClain. Classic heel stuff, right? All-Star Club is going to cheat after that to win and then move up the ranks. Angelo's rock and rolling, big move, one, two, Travis flying elbow. Angelo Dawkins doesn't move. Angelo Dawkins come back. He doesn't move. Travis Teller comes in, so he elbows Angelo Dawkins. Rudy Charles stands up and doesn't know what to do. The crowd grew silent. Rudy rings the bell. What happened? Rudy had no choice but to disqualify the All-Star Club. It was an awkward finish that felt like a letdown as the announcer described why the match ended. The audience had no idea why the ref called for the bell because they were never told the rules. I said all that to say this, and that is, I told my guys right in the old FCW arena, never let anybody see a sweat, and let's turn a negative into a positive. We walked back through the curtain, and all four guys and Rudy were like, God, we, we messed up the finish. We, God, we, we messed up. You know, and their heads were down. Everybody around the monitor turned and looked at them. I grabbed them. I said, keep your chins up. Don't ever let anybody see you sweat. Don't ever let anybody see you, you, you know, come in sulking like that. And I stepped back, and I said, that was awesome, guys. Now, we, we, we established the rule right there of the second save gets the disqualification. Now we can use it and get some heat. And everybody in the locker room is like, yes, that's smart. Yes. In fact, the matter is we screwed up the finish, but nobody knew. And that's the whole deal with us going in there. And only we know the finish that as long as we don't let you know that we messed up, that we can do whatever we want. And it can be good and it can make sense. But it takes someone with a uh, brain to be able to sort that stuff out. I look back now, and I think the All-Star Club was destined for greatness. But that one night, that one fateful night came along. And who's now on the main roster? Angelo Dawkins. And he deserves it. But if I'm ever in a match with Angelo Dawkins, I'm going to come drop an elbow on him, and hopefully he moves. Those were some 
well, not some, that was one rule that really just, as I used to say in the South, maybe sticks in my crawl, grinds in my gears. It really just made me upset. The the art of tag team wrestling when I was there was really uh, hamstringed and, and held down. I don't know why. I don't know if, I don't know if it was for the single matches to mean more, or maybe somebody just hated tag team wrestling. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Send me some more questions. My name is Eugene. Nick Dinsmore. And I'm out.